Hello, and welcome to eBible Fellowship's Evening Bible Studies with your host and Bible teacher, Chris McCann. We invite you to our website at ebiblefellowship.org for additional Bible studies. And now, with his study in the Book of Romans, here's Chris McCann. Good evening, and welcome to eBible Fellowship's Bible study in the Book of Romans. Tonight is study number 22 of Romans chapter 3, and we're continuing to read verse 11. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way, they are together, become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. And I'll stop reading there. Okay, in our last study, we were discussing the end of verse 11, which uh, tells us that there is none that seeketh after God. And I mention how uh, there are so many billions of people in the world, and the world's approaching 8 billion total population. And out of that, about 2 billion are professed Christians. 1.8 billion, that's almost 2 billion, are Muslims. 1.8 1.35 billion are Hindus. So there already we have over 5 billion, and then there's another 535 million Buddhists. That would be 5.5 billion. And I'm sure with the other varied religions, we could probably get 500 million to a billion more. So overwhelmingly, the vast number of people in the world are religious. They're religious, and religion is a form of seeking God. Uh, But it, it doesn't qualify for what God is saying when he says there is none that seeketh after God, because God is referring to true seekers, those who would seek him in a right way, a biblical way, in a proper manner of mankind and all people in their sin condition, you know, of themselves, it is a fact that none seek after him. And and yet, it's also true that God commands that uh, the people of the world to seek him. If we go to Matthew chapter 6, and you know, there's there's a, a, a lot of scriptural information in the Bible having to do with seeking God, and and when, when you look at some of the verses, you can see how natural-minded people could certainly come away with a wrong understanding, but you know, that's no excuse. That's how God has written the whole Bible with many verses that the natural-minded person takes the wrong way, has a lack of understanding what is really being said. In Matthew chapter 6, we read in verse 33, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. That would be a command. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Do not seek wealth. Do not seek uh, love. Do not seek whatever else in the world, whatever your desires, whatever your goals, whatever uh, you have your, your mind's eye on. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And God says, and all these things shall be added unto you. That is everything else that you require or need to to be a servant of the Lord in this world, God will take care of. Concentrate, put first, seeking God uh, or seeking the kingdom of God. And to seek the kingdom of God, you have to seek God and his righteousness. And we know Christ is the righteousness of God. So, so seek the Lord Jesus Christ that that you might be spared that he might have mercy upon you you know this this would have all been 
applicable in the day of salvation. Seek the Lord. Seek the Lord. In the next chapter of Matthew, in Matthew 7, we read in verse 7, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Isn't that misleading? Isn't God just not being uh, open with with the reader of the Bible? Here he is he is commanding, he is telling um, those who come to the Bible to seek him, and they'll find. And yet over in Romans, he says, there is none that seek him. Well, you know, it's God's word. It's God's word, and, and he verily is a God that hideth himself. He is truth. He hides the truth. He allows the wicked to come to the Bible and to uh, superficially read it, to take it at face value, and to run after it, and to follow it, and, and to think they have done what the law had told them to do, and yet in reality they failed. They, they didn't understand what was being said. They did not compare Scripture with Scripture. They did not harmonize their conclusion with the whole of the Bible. In other words, if you read these verses, you also have to read what we just read in Romans chapter 3, there is none that seek him. And then you have to go to God if you lack understanding and say, Lord, um, you, you tell me to seek you first. You tell me to seek and I will find. But then in Romans, you say there, that there are none that seek you. How can I understand this, O Lord? Well, we're not going to try and answer that question now. But that is what should be done. When we come to the Bible and, and we, we find what appear to be contradictions, things that, that do not agree together, and, and we, we just kind of, you know, take out a piece of paper, write down this verse. Well, this says seek and find, um, seek the kingdom of God first. And in another column, this says none can seek him. And we go on from there, or even more than what is said here in Matthew 7, if we turn to Hebrews 11, God says in verse 6, But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And again, this verse can, can cause misunderstanding. Someone might think, oh, I get it. I get it. Um, when God says there's none that seek after him, he means none seek him diligently. And so I'm going to seek diligently. And, and, and well, no, <laughs> no, that, that's that you're, you're going to be wrong. You're going to be wrong. It, it is not uh, that you have to put extra special effort into seeking him. No, that's still not the solution to harmonize these things. But again, we can, we can put that aside and we keep reading. And when we keep reading, we can turn to the Old Testament, to the book of Amos. In Amos chapter 5, Amos 5, I'll start reading in verse 4. It says, For thus saith Jehovah unto the house of Israel, Seek ye me, and ye shall live. But seek not Bethel, nor enter into Gilgal, and pass not to Beersheba. For Gilgal shall surely go into captivity, and Bethel shall come to naught. Seek Jehovah, and ye shall live, lest he break out like fire in the house of Joseph and devour it and there be none to quench it in Bethel. Okay, so we, we can see, uh, you, you know, it's the same gospel, isn't it? The, the same command 
that's in the New Testament, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, is in the Old Testament. Seek Jehovah and live. Seek ye me, God says, and ye shall live. But the qualifying statement must be that we can only seek him in a way that is acceptable to him, and no human being is capable of doing that. Therefore, none seek him. Now, here we are given a little inkling of part of the problem for those that would would think they're seeking God when God says, in, again, in verse 4 of Amos 5, uh, the end of verse 4, Seek ye me, and ye shall live. Then in verse 5, But seek not Bethel. And Bethel, it, it was a place, a city, and it was where uh, a false system of, of uh, worship was set up in the days of King Jeroboam of Israel. But it, it means... Beth means house, and El means God, house of God. And, of course, the house of God identifies with the church. Judgment begins at the house of God. So we we can see what God is saying. Seek me. Seek not the church. And that's a fine distinction that masses of people are unable to make. And and it would be true also of the Muslim. Seek Jehovah, the God of the Bible. Seek not the the mosque or or the Islamic system of worship. It's true of the Buddhist. It's true of the Hindu. It's true of the Jew. Seek God. Seek the true living God the one who has given us his word, the Bible, and not any sort of outward uh, religious system or or religious trappings. Uh, Don't get caught up in, in the formula. Don't get caught up in the institution of religion. Go directly to God. The Lord, when he ended the church age, that was his intention for that great multitude of people that are outside of the churches and congregations, scattered amongst the nations of the world, that uh, he was dealing with people on an individual basis, one-on-one, God with the sinner. And, And God sent forth his word apart from Bethel, from the house of God, apart from any religion, just through the people of God, and and primarily he used the medium of the the electronic airwaves to broadcast to the people of the world that, and this was leading up to May 21, 2011, as Judgment Day would occur on that day. And so he had proclaimed to come to him, to, to go to the Bible, seek Jehovah alone and live. That is potentially, possibly, God could have had mercy. He may have saved you if if you come humbly to him because it was the proper time to seek. You know, the Bible also tells us concerning seeking that there was a, a, a set season. If we turn to Ecclesiastes chapter 3, wherein God speaks of to everything there is a season in verse 1. Uh, I'll, I'll read that verse. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born and a time to die. And we can understand the time to be born spiritually to refer to a time in which God will save and, and give new hearts and, and make born again his people. And there's also a time to die, which spiritually would relate to our present time period of judgment day. It's the time of the dead. You know, all of these statements have spiritual meaning. 
And then if we go down to verse 6, we read a time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away. The word get, the Hebrew word translated as get, is Strong's number 1245, and it is a word that's often translated seek. It is more helpful to understand it that way. There is a time to seek and a time to lose. And, and, and so there is a set period of time and the Bible calls it the day of salvation, wherein God made himself available, opened up the door of heaven, and sent forth his word to, to save the sinners. Actually, the Lord Jesus Christ, when, uh, when it comes to true seeking, Christ is essential. And, and remember, he, he declared in the Gospels, the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. So the the true seeker is is God himself. God seeks the person he has elected to salvation. As Jesus also said, I have I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But anyway, there there is a time period that identifies with the day of salvation, wherein God commands to seek him, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, seek Jehovah and you will live. That is, if you can seek him properly and rightly, uh, and, and that would require him to first take action. But, it, but again, we, we don't want to get into answering that question as yet. Uh, it, it's sufficient for us right now to understand that there is a time uh, wherein seeking was to be done. And this would agree with Isaiah 55, Isaiah 55, verse 6. Seek ye Jehovah while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. You see, the word while is a time reference, and, and there's a definite implication that there will come a time when he will not be able to be found. And, and we're going to look at scriptures that, that say that very thing. So seek ye Jehovah while he may be found. The time to seek, the day of salvation, and then God revealed he opened up his word at the time of the end to reveal that the day of salvation was, was coming to a close. He declared the day, the day of salvation would end oh, uh, across the face of the earth forevermore. May 21, 2011, Judgment Day. Seek the Lord while he may be found up until that point because then the door would be shut and it would be vain, an empty thing to seek him after that time. Now, another verse or another passage that emphasizes seeking God in a certain time period is in Zephaniah chapter 2. And I'll start reading from verse 1. Gather yourselves together, yea, gather together, O nation, not desired, before the decree bring forth. What does that mean? Before the decree bring forth. That is before the appointed day of judgment arrives, before God shuts the door of heaven, before he darkens the light of the sun, before he dries up the waters of the earth, the gospel waters, before these things, before the decree bring forth, before the day passes the chaff, before the fierce anger of Jehovah come upon you, before the day of Jehovah's anger come upon you, seek ye Jehovah, all ye meek of the earth, which have wrought his judgment. Seek righteousness, as Matthew 6 encouraged. Seek 
the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Seek righteousness, seek meekness. It may be he shall be hid in the day of Jehovah's anger. And all God's people are hid because we're hid with Christ in God. We That's what salvation has accomplished. It has guaranteed us eternal safety and security from um, the, the wrath of God, from the destruction that is uh, destroying the earth in this time. Uh, it will not harm, it will not come and destroy those that God has saved. They have sought the Lord. They are the meek the, the, that have a heart after God's own heart, after the heart of Christ, and he is most meek. And, and so we have that characteristic. And by God's magnificent grace and mercy, he has hid us, uh, protecting us, even though we're left and remaining on the earth to go through this prolonged judgment day, yet no harm will come to us. So this this was the day of salvation. This was the time while God could be found. This was the time to seek. But now comes the time to lose. Immediately following the judgment, the, there, there was a time to be born. But now's the time to die. We, we can't, you know, uh, stick our heads in the sand. We, we can't uh, run from these truths these are they're unpleasant they're grievous it's terrible we can weep uh for our loved ones but it's the truth it's what the bible says and and we have to submit to the things the bible tells us that this is the word of god and 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 so though we are saddened and and we would desire Oh, we would desire to bring the gospel to our family and friends and to strangers and enemies and to all if we could, but we cannot because that time wherein God was to be sought has passed. The the time to seek the Lord has ended. You've been listening to eBible Fellowship's Evening Bible Studies with your host and Bible teacher, Chris McCann. Visit our website at ebiblefellowship.org for additional studies. Until next time, may the Lord's perfect will be done.